grace to you and peace from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our risen and living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There are two phrases from our epistle reading in 1 Timothy chapter 2 upon which I will base this message, and they are printed for you in italics in your service folder. They are the words, the knowledge of the truth, and I am telling the truth. This word truth is uh, one of the main victims in our culture's attack upon language in this century. Truth is seen as being a dirty word today. To avoid what is truly true, the enlightened elites of our society have agreed that each of us can have our own truth. So there is my truth and your truth and his truth and her truth. And even when these supposed truths contradict each other as polar opposites, none of them can be said to be false. But that is not our life in the real world, is it? Though we may not want to hear it or always admit it, there is indeed truth, and absolutely so for our lives. If the truth be told, how embarrassed would we be by what others would then know about us? If the truth be told, how many explanations and apologies would we owe to those who are around us? If the truth be told, how much trouble would we be in with our spouse? If the truth be told, how much would it then cost us in fines and legal fees? Well, now we all want the truth to be told as long as it is our own version of the truth. I have worked with children as a pastor and as a father long enough to know that when I hear two different sides of a story, I know that each one contains that part of the truth that makes the teller look good. And it also conveniently skips that part of the story which makes the teller look bad. So the savvy listener of these stories must realize that the complete truth lies somewhere in the middle of these two different accounts. The truth does hurt, while lies, on the other hand, feel pretty good for us to both tell and to hear. I think this quote is attributed to Martin Luther, that a lie can make its way around the world before the truth even gets out of bed in the morning. The truth is hard for us to say and hard for us to swallow. Lies, however, they go down oh so very easily. But truth, after all, is like a medicine. It tastes bad when we have to say it, but it does benefit our bodies and our lives and our relationships with others. In contrast, lies are like candy. They are sweet to the taste, but they give us only empty calories and tooth decay, or in this instance, truth decay. Constant lying makes it hard for us to separate what is fact from what is fiction. Those who lie often lose their grip on what is indeed true after all. The truth is easy for us to remember because it does not change. Our lies, however, force us to remember what story we told to which person. There is a truth that applies to all people because its source is the one true 
almighty God of the universe, who is also our common creator. He is the God of all truth, who wants his absolute truth to be told. And as the people whom he has claimed for his very own, we know what this truth is. For our God has revealed his eternal truth in the person and the work of his one and only Son living our human life. The one whom the gospel writer John describes in his first chapter as being full of grace and truth. Later on in that same gospel, Jesus describes himself as being the way, the truth, and the life. And so for us to know Jesus is also then to know the truth. And that truth saves us from the lies of this world. The Holy Spirit reveals that saving truth of Jesus to us in the words of the Holy Bible, in our holy baptism, and here in the Lord's Supper. That truth of Jesus is to be part of who we are as his baptized believers. We are to love, to speak, and to do what is true. The Apostle Paul writes in his letter to the Ephesians chapter 4 that speaking the truth to others is the way that we become mature believers in our Lord Jesus Christ. If the truth be told, we will come to the knowledge of our sin, of our selfishness, and of our rebellion that separates us from God. If the truth be told, we will also come to the knowledge uh, that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has lived a perfect human life for us. If the truth be told, we will come to the knowledge that the innocent Jesus died upon the cross as a full sacrifice for us in our place. If the truth be told, we will come to the knowledge that Jesus now has risen from the grave in victory over our death. If the truth be told, we will come to the knowledge that apart from Jesus, we stand before God as condemned sinners. If the truth be told, we will come to the knowledge that by faith in Jesus as our Savior, God now sees us as his forgiven saints. If the truth be told, we will come to the knowledge that we now have God's promise and his gift of new and eternal life. If the truth be told, we will come to the knowledge that God wants all people to have life with him in his Son, Jesus Christ. This truth needs to be told. It needs to be told for our eternal good and for the good of all of those who are around us. We are to speak God's truth to this world's lies. Now, we do not use God's truth as a weapon with meanness in order to hurt other people, but instead we use God's truth in love to help free them from their falsehood. We do not make up our version of the truth in order to use it against others, but instead with the truth of God's word and his sacraments, we speak this truth in Jesus Christ to those around us. As disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are blessed to be his truth tellers. We are modern day apostles teaching true faith in Christ by our words and through our works. God wants all the people that he has created to be saved from our sins and our selfishness to be saved from our death and our destruction. God has given to us his truth in order to bring us this very salvation, the truth of his own son living in human flesh, the truth that is also the Holy Bible. 
As the Holy Spirit leads us to the knowledge of this truth, we have freedom from our sin, a freedom that has been won for us by our Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing this truth for our own lives, we now share this truth with others. For if the truth be told, people will come to faith in Jesus as their Savior from sin and for life. To God alone be all of the glory. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in our Lord and in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue in our service folder with the singing of our creed song, We Come to Praise You, We Stand. those listed for us under healing and comfort. We give thanks to God for those who serve us in our nation's military and as emergency personnel. We also remember the family of Debbie Absalon, a daughter of our member Mary Leifer, as Debbie died suddenly on Thursday. Rejoicing in Christ's salvation offered to all, let us call upon God our Father for ourselves and for all people. Kind Father, your Son declared to us that we cannot serve you and also be devoted to money. Free all your baptized children from obsession with the goods of this world, that they may set their hearts on the joys of the kingdom and the inheritance that never fades. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you entrust to your people the abundant wealth of Christ's salvation in your word and sacraments. Bless all pastors that they might be faithful stewards of these mysteries and grant that all your people would make proper use of your means of grace and rejoice in your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, maker of heaven and earth, you have created man and woman for different offices and with different gifts that they might complement one another and glorify you. Grant that in our homes and congregations your people might rejoice in the callings you have given them. Lord, in your mercy, God our Savior, uphold our President, our Governor, Congress, Legislature, Judiciary, and all whom you have placed in government positions, along with those who dedicate their lives to serve for our protection in our nation's military, law enforcement, firefighters, emergency responders, and health care professionals. We ask for you to bless them with wisdom and mercy in the exercise of their duties, that we may lead peaceable and quiet lives, godly and dignified in every way. Lord, in your mercy, 
Heavenly Father, be with the sick and those who suffer, those troubled in mind, those grieving in their sorrows, and the dying in their last hours, especially remembering Evelyn, Alice, Lois, Catherine, Barb, Gloria, Ellery, Pat, Elroy, Peggy, John, Ruth, Will, Cindy, Rick, Ken, Sherry, Susie, Marcy, Zach, Susan, Ava, Reed, Ruby, Jim, and those we name in our hearts. Grant them the comfort of your presence, relief according to your will, and peace in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would grant your comfort and peace to Debbie's family as they mourn her sudden passing from them, uh, reminding them of your great love for her and your, your claim upon her in holy baptism, calling her to faith in Jesus as her Lord and Savior. We trust that the promise of the resurrection to eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord uh, will be their hope at this time of their earthly sorrow and sadness. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Almighty Father, you desire all to be saved. Remember your foes who have rejected your word and call them to repentance and faith, as well as your lost lambs who have wandered away from the flock of your faithful, that you would work through us to restore them and return them to your worshiping family, so that they also would rejoice in your righteousness and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks to you, O Lord, for you have forgiven our debt of sin for the sake of Jesus. Preserve us in his grace and life until that day when you gather us to be among the saints in glory around your throne. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sing together the offertory. We are an offering as printed in our service folders. remember us in your kingdom and teach us all to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen O god from whom come all holy desires all good counsels and all just works Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our closing hymn, Be Thou Our Vision, printed for us in our service folder.
morning. It has been our pleasure to have served you in Christian worship today. Uh, a few things from our bulletin notes coming up this week. Uh, choir will practice tomorrow evening at 7 in the school music room. And church council will meet at that same time in the school library. Uh, Tuesday in the fellowship hall at 6.30, all ladies and their guests are invited by our evening guild for a salad supper. Uh, Thursday at 1 o'clock is our site ministries time in Baldwin. Friday morning at school is Grandparents' Day with many special activities. And we will also have a lifeline screening taking place uh, in the fellowship hall on Friday. Uh, we do wish you God's blessings upon this day and upon your entire week as well.